Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. We are chugging along, building out our Philotyper R package. Believe it or not, we are getting to a point where I'm almost ready to submit this to CRAN. There's a few more housekeeping things that we need to do along the way to prove to ourselves that it is in fact ready to be submitted to CRAN. Thankfully, the great tools from Use This and DevTools in general are just really uh, powerful in helping us to accomplish a few of these last second checks. We're gonna do two checks today. So the first check um, is the build, right? And so in our studio, we've got the, the build tab here in the upper right corner. I can always click check and this will run the build process uh, on my local computer. You may have noticed <laughs> that I am using a Mac OS X computer. Um, but we want to know that this also runs on a Windows computer or on a Linux computer or other more historic operating systems. I only have a Mac, so I can't very easily test on Windows. Um, I could, I guess, test it on Linux pretty easily by kind of um, trying to install it onto our cluster. Um, and maybe a, a Windows computer would be a few hundred bucks, but that just seems kind of expensive and stupid to maintain for doing a test like this. Thankfully, uh, the GitHub Actions tool that we talked about in the last episode will allow us to spin up, if you will, different types of operating systems to, to build and run the tests of our package. And so we're gonna see how to do that today. We're gonna use GitHub Actions to run this build um, on a variety of different operating systems and then get a report back um, that will tell us uh, how well it built and if it had any problems on these other operating systems. This is a check that CRAN will run when we submit our code, so we may as well run it ourselves and make sure it works. The second thing that we're gonna do uh, is more of kind of a way to show a flex, if you will, of GitHub Actions. Something we didn't talk about with test-driven development is something called coverage. And so we are going to look at the coverage of our tests on our code. We wanna make sure that all of the code in our uh, package has a test that is making sure that, um, that, it, that it's doing what we think it's doing, right? And so again, we can use um, a package on our local computer, but also on GitHub Actions to see what our code coverage is. And so then for both of these things, both building the package on different operating systems, as well as code coverage, we can automatically get a little badge that will go into our readme file to tell other people that come to our repository how awesome our package is. Don't you just want that? So we'll get going. And obviously we ran our command check and everything worked swimmingly, uh, went according to plan. But again, that's only on a Mac. And so now I wanna try this on other operating systems and we'll get GitHub Actions to do that for us. So using the use this package, which I have automatically uh, loaded when my version of our studio opens. You can talk about that um, perhaps back in the very first episode of this whole series of how to set that up if you're interested in that. Otherwise you could do like use this colon colon and then the name of your function. But I'm not gonna do that because I already have it loaded. I don't need to do all that extra typing. So I'm gonna do use GitHub, uh, gotta spell it right, GitHub action, right? And then I'll go ahead and not give it any arguments. And so it then gives me three options of things that I could add, right? Uh, and so there's other options that you can see here. Uh, let's go ahead and open that link. And opening that up, we see a variety of different YAML files that will um, say, check our test coverage, right? Um, and it does all sorts of different things on a push or pull. Uh, we saw that in the last episode when talking about building our package down site, right? And so this is basically what would be run to check the test coverage, right? Which we're gonna get um, GitHub Actions to do for us, but that just kind of shows it for, um, shows a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, this package down YAML is again what we ran in the last episode. So this is a pretty helpful set of tools that you can use to go about getting workflows for GitHub Actions that you could then use uh, with your R project. Um, I think some of these I've caught my eye like lint, um, and so we'll perhaps come back to that in a future episode to see how we can check uh, the style of our code. But for now, I'm gonna use the built-in options from GitHub Actions, and I'm gonna go ahead with the check standard. And again, this runs our command check on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. So I'm gonna type one. And so what it tells us is it set the active project to Philotyper, um, and it's saved, let's see, 
Right, so it saved this check standard YAML, which again, if I come back here, uh, let's see, check standard YAML. So it set this file uh, to GitHub workflows, our command check YAML. And so what we'll notice is that it's using, yeah, Mac, Windows, Ubuntu uh, for the different uh, operating systems that it's using, okay? And it then tells us we can learn more at that readme. And it then added the R command check badge to readme.rmd. So let's go check that out over here in files. And so then if we look at readme.rmd, we then see that, yep, sure enough, here on line 18 or 19, uh, it put in a badge, right? And so what I think I could do would be to do something like uh, build readme. And then if I look at the readme, um, it then puts in that badge. Um, and I could preview it perhaps by clicking preview there. And we see then that it's put in this link to a badge uh, that doesn't exist because I haven't actually pushed this up yet, right? Um, let's go ahead and commit and push because that will then trigger uh, this action to run for us. So um, again, I'll do it here in the Git tab and I'll go ahead and stage these and then commit. And I'll say check build on Windows, Mac, OS X, and Linux, right? And then we'll commit that, close, close, and push. If we come back to our Philotyper page, um, we see that we've got this brown circle next to the commit. And if you hover over that, it tells you it's pending. Uh, and that's because it has started some of these checks, right? So I'll check back when this is completed running and let you know how we did. So that took about 14 minutes to run and I now have a red X instead of that brown circle next to my commit message. And when I highlight, it says failure. <laughs> Ugh. So let's click on that and see what happened. And so it seems like all of the tests passed um, except for building on an old release of Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and click on details there so we can learn a little bit more about what happened. Um, and so again, I see lots of red, <laughs> it's always scary. Um, and it ran through the R command build. So it got everything installed that it needed. Um, and then it says error uh, package installation failed. Um, all the stuff halted, right? So if I go back up, and see where we can find some error messages. It's always helpful to read the error message, right? Rather than just saying, ah, it didn't work. What do I do? Well, read the error message. And so what I see here on line 58 and 59 is that there was an error in load namespace. Namespace stats 4.3.3 is already loaded, but greater than or equal to 4.4.0 is required. Um, so I don't know why it didn't load the more recent version, except that this is the old release of Ubuntu. So maybe we can't run stats 4.4.0. Um, we needed 4.3.3. Uh, I think we were using stats for something really trivial and small <laughs> um, in the package. And um, I could go back into here. Let's go ahead and search for stats. And let's see, so it's in our description file. Uh, we're using na.omit um, in our namespace and in kmers.r, right? And so that would be where we might have a sequence that's got a ambiguous base in it, something other than ATG or C, and then we get that, um, that kmer, right, in base four. And if uh, it's like a, a fifth base, then that's not going to work. We're going to get a, an A value back out, right? And so then what we're basically saying is drop anything that's an NA value. So this is not like cutting edge technology or code. And so I think what we'll do is go ahead and I have it opened here already. Um, I'll use stats greater than say 4.0 um, and we'll roll with that. Um, now, my concern <laughs> might be that this was the first thing it loaded and everything else failed. So we'll have to see. Uh, this might take some rinsing and repeating, but hopefully these types of problems will only be a problem right now. And then going forward, we won't have these types of import problems in the future. The problems we'll have might be more related to our actual code. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. 
and then commit this change to my description. And I'll say rollback version of stats required. And we'll go ahead and commit. I'll then go ahead and push. And again, coming back to my code, I'll see that it's going through this all again, right? So this took about 14 minutes to go through before. I think it'll probably go a bit faster because it's got a lot of the stuff already loaded, is my hope. Um, that was certainly the experience we had with building the package down the first time. That The first time it was slower than it is this time. So anyway, uh, I'll check back with you and let you know actually how long it took to run. Fantastic. That ran, it again took about 13 and a half minutes. Uh, what I noticed with all the others is that they actually ran much more quickly. So if I click on this usage link down in the run details, you'll see how long each of the different tests took to run. And so while in the previous iteration, these also were around like 13 minutes or so, uh, they're now down around two to four minutes. I don't know why that Windows one would be longer. Who knows? Um, maybe it's a Windows thing. Uh, and then the Ubuntu latest, again, took a long time. So I suspect that if we run this again, um, it's gonna go a lot faster. So I'm gonna check that out because we're gonna do another push because I wanna test the code coverage. And so we're gonna create another GitHub action. And so before we do the GitHub action though, I want to go ahead and check the code coverage on my local computer here. So there's a package called cover, C-O-V-R. Uh, again, it's this R thing uh, that allows you to test the coverage of your code with your tests. With DevTools, there is a, a, a kind of a wrapper around that cover package. And so what we'll do is test underscore coverage and not give it any arguments. We're gonna have it test the current package and then it's gonna show us a report once it's done testing the coverage. The packages cover and DT are required. Would you like to install them? Yes, actually. So you may or may not have had to install those depending on whether or not you've installed them in the past. And so thankfully I had that nice little dialogue that popped up here. And now what it's going through is it's, uh, I can see stuff happening um, all around. So it has computed the test coverage for Phylotyper. And I see that my coverage is 89.26%, which is a little bit lower actually, to be honest, than what I thought it was gonna be. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and blow this out a little bit to make it bigger. And uh, I see where the problem is in that I don't have any tests for Kamer's CPP, right? And actually, I don't use Kamer CPP. <laughs> this is still in there, but you might recall uh, that I, I took out the C++ version. We're actually gonna come back to this in a future episode. So I'm not worried about that just now. And what you'll notice is that we actually, we never hit any of those lines in the test because we're not actually using uh, the code in Kamer CPP. So otherwise, our coverage is at 100%. I'm not gonna fix this right now, but um, we'll, we'll see this change when we come back to it in, in a future episode, like I mentioned. So the reason the coverage is so high for these five R scripts is because, again, I had used test-driven development. I wrote the test, and then I wrote the code to pass the test, right? And, and so it was almost like I had the test. Actually, I did have the test. It's not almost like, it is like, it is the same. <laughs> um, and so that's how we get really high coverage. Now, it's not always possible to get 100% coverage because there might be some gymnastics that have to be done um, to just, just to write the code. And, and sometimes you kind of have to manually test things out. Uh, and that kind of gets into more advanced concepts in test-driven development and in programming. But I'm pretty happy to have this 100% coverage. Now what I'd like to do is to have a GitHub action do this for me. So again, we can use use GitHub action, run that. And again, it gives us the options of one, two, or three. I'm actually gonna hit zero to get out of that so I can show you another way to run that function. So we could take use GitHub action and in quotes, I'm gonna put that number two, which is test, uh, test hyphen coverage. And so one thing I forgot to mention last time was that when it saved this YAML file that again we saw on the rlib actions examples page, right? It saves it to a .github uh, workflows file. So if I come to back to my files and I see that there's a, it almost looks like GitHub without a dot in front of it, but that little blue thing is a dot before that G. And then if we go into workflows, we see the actual YAML files, right? And so what's nice about this then is that I could go into any of these YAML files and customize them for my own uses. My knowledge of GitHub Actions is a little bit better than yours. <laughs> um, 
but so I'm not going to go in and tweak these to kind of improve them further. I'm, I'm going to be pretty happy with them. And again, we'll go ahead and stage this and commit it. So I'll do add uh, GitHub actions for testing uh, code coverage. And we'll go ahead and commit that. And then we'll go ahead and push this up. And again, we see that we've got some pending jobs in here and that uh, we have all of our other R command check things going on. And we have um, our test coverage YAML uh, waiting to be run. And it's going through and it's installing all the good stuff it needs to make sure that it can actually install and run the package uh, to, to test uh, the various tests to get our code coverage. So again, this is gonna take a bit of time for it to get up and running. And I will check back with you once it's done. Oh no, we have another red X here. I see that my test coverage failed after one minute. Everything else took between one and four minutes to run. So sure enough, those Ubuntu releases were quite fast once we did the initial one. So my test coverage is failing, which is surprising because all the tests pass on all these other installations. So there might be something wrong with kind of the wiring or how I have things set up. So let's go ahead and do the details. And we see um, on line 42 here, error code cov token not found. Please provide code cov token with the hyphen T flag. Ah, okay, so we need to get a code cov token. And my understanding of how this all works is that code cov is a service that um, evaluates basically your coverage. And to, to because it uses a someone else's computer, they wanna make sure that people aren't kind of hammering their server constantly. And so you have to have a token, uh, which basically means you have permission to use their server. It's free for open source projects. I'm not sure about closed source projects, but anyway, it's free for us. So let's go ahead and figure out how we generate a CodeCov token. So I'll say git CodeCov token, and I will then go ahead to getting started with CodeCov. So I'm gonna click on this link for a free trial. Uh, my understanding from looking at this documentation is that it's forever free for open source projects um, and that it charges you for closed source projects. So I'm only gonna use this for open source projects. So I'll go ahead and click on this link here for using it with GitHub. And so it wants permission to do all this stuff. I'll say, go ahead. And I'm gonna do it for personal use for open source and single developer projects. It's always free. Um, sure, I'll get their spam email, why not? I'm gonna agree to the terms of services. Go ahead and continue. So this takes me to my page. These are all my repositories that I have on GitHub. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click this link to configure the app. And this then will allow me to go to Riffamonis, which is the organization that I have Phylotyper under. And I'll say all repositories and give them those permissions. Go ahead and say install. Doing some two-factor authentication. All right, so it took a moment or two for Riffamonis to show up in here. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And so now I see the Riffamonis um, repositories, right? And so now if I look for Phylotyper, it's right there. All right, so now I'm in Riffamonis Phylotyper. So I have GitHub Actions selected here. This next step generates and uploads the YAML file to do uh, the GitHub action. I'm not gonna worry about this because we've already got this through um, the, the, the GitHub action that we've made for our package already. We then also have add repository token as a repository secret. I've got this grayed out so you can't see it because this is supposed to be private. Um, and so we then see that we can add repository token as a repository secret. And so nicely, I see that I've got the name and the secret and that corresponds to uh, CodeCov token uh, that I'll then paste into here. And then this for the secret, I'll go ahead and copy that and then paste that into here. I'll then go ahead and do add secret. And so now I have my CodeCov token as a repository secret. And so now what I need to do is get um, GitHub to rerun the action. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click rerun jobs here and hopefully it will pass. So I'll go ahead and have it rerun the failed jobs. And yeah, and so we'll go ahead and rerun jobs and we'll see how long this takes and hopefully we get a nice green check mark. So that ran through this time, took a couple minutes everything went swimmingly. 
So if I click refresh on my CodeCov page, I now see that I've got 91.52% coverage, which is basically what I had, 100% coverage on the R, 0% coverage on the C++. That is awesome. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I guess if you go to flags, components, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm only gonna be really concerned with the overview and looking at the overall uh, level of coverage. So I could have seen similar type of output if I had have come to the run code cov uh, link here, clicking on that arrow and then scrolling down, it then um, has all this information and it says your upload is now processing. When finished, results will be available here, which is the same place. Um, and yeah, so 91.52, this is for that specific commit. And again, if I had clicked on that, I come back to this page that I've seen before. One thing that I would like to get in my uh, GitHub repo is a handy dandy little badge indicating that I'm doing an awesome job with my code coverage in my uh, readme file. And so I don't currently have that, but a site that does is dplyr. So if I do dplyr and then GitHub and go to this page, again, this is an illustration of what I've talked about in previous episodes of borrowing from what other people do. I want a badge like this that indicates my level of code coverage. And so I can find that code actually in the readme.rmd file, which is right here. And I see that there is a line of code here for that, um, for that, right? And so I'm gonna come back to my uh, readme file, readme rmd, I'm gonna put that under here. Now, there's stuff in here for dplyr rather than for phylotyper. So here I'm gonna do rifamonas and then phylotyper, right? And then here I will do the same thing Let's see that actually links up to what we think it should link up to. So pasting that in, sure enough, we get we get that page we've been seeing. And then the badge is this other URL and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good. So that's what the badge will look like. Um, I kind of already saw this by ho uh, hovering over it. I see that badge there, right? So we'll go ahead and save and then um, we'll update the readme, build readme Running that, we'll get the markdown version of the R markdown version. And if I look at my readme MD and I do the preview, I now see that it looks like this. Um, the alignment there is a little bit funky. I'm not sure what that is about. Won't worry about it. I'll go ahead and commit these changes. Add badge for code coverage. Commit, close, close, pushing this up. We see that everything is running once again, but if we look down at our readme file, we see that the code cov is already there. It looks a lot nicer alignment than what I saw within our studio. And so that's pretty cool, right? We now have these badges that will tell anybody looking at a repository whether or not it passes being built and what our code coverage is. Like I said, we'll come back um, and, and look at that C++ code to see if we can't get that a little bit higher. Um, but I, I think that's a little bit of an artifact of me leaving the C++ code in without actually using it. So um, cool with that. And I think that brings us to a nice stopping point. I'm going to assume that I'll get a nice green check at the end of all this. Um, and we're gonna keep plugging away in the next couple of episodes, getting closer and closer to being ready to submit our package up to CRAN with hopefully no red X's and all green check marks. So again, I'm just really impressed by these GitHub Actions and what they allow us to do when I only have a Mac, it allows me to test on different computers, it allows me to constantly be uh, checking for code coverage, even if I forget to do it on my local computer, it'll automatically do it uh, up on GitHub, which is, which is pretty slick. All right. Tell your friends about what we're doing here on Code Club. I think there's a lot of really cool stuff, even if you're not all that interested in the actual package that I've been developing. I think all of you have a package in you, and I hope that you find content like today useful. If they do, let me know down below in the comments what you found most useful and you know, alternatively what you found to be challenging. All right, see you next time for another episode of Code Club.